this is called the 1x2x3plus cube because it's essentially somebody took a 1x2x3 you can see here's the top layer and here's the bottom layer and just ignore this front part and then turned it into a puzzle with the shape of a plus sign so there you are the 1x2x3plus cube what it actually is though is a, a cornerless 3x3x2 you can see that it's just basically a 3x3x2 except you don't have these corner pieces which you might think doesn't make that much of a difference but generally found this puzzle to be not nearly as demanding to solve as a normal 3x3x2 now it is very loose I didn't sand this puzzle because it has very generous tolerances given to it by R.C. Pongo, the designer. You can see it is kind of loose, and almost loose enough to the point where it just kind of feels like a toy rather than an actual puzzle. But honestly, it's fine. The stickers look very nice. I got them from Oliver's Stickers. I made the mistake of ordering 3x3 stickers from him. The 3x3 the three three stickers you get from Oliver, they have a really hard time adhering to 3D printed surfaces, even ones that you sand. You can see that the sticker surfaces actually were all sanded, but still it's not perfect, like the sticker here doesn't really want to stay in the corner. I, I really like how bright the stickers look, and uh, overall, like, even compared to this 3x3x2, three by three by the sticker shades are just really popping in my opinion. So let's scramble it and see how hard it is. I think that's about as scrambled as this puzzle gets. It doesn't get too scrambled because there's just not that many pieces. But I guess I'll try and solve it now. I guess, let's see, the white side should be first. These pieces all have a lot of stickers on them. So even though there's not that many pieces, there's still a lot to look at. So let's see, this is the green and okay so let's ignore these side colors and only look at the actual edge color so this is the green and red no I mean white and red what am I talking about this is the white and orange so standard color scheme it goes directly behind it here and then this would be the green Let's see, red, white, blue, so green would go here, as it does, and the last white piece goes here. Now all we have to do is solve these red um, pieces. It is very easy, and I, I guess I'll show you the basic method, that, like you don't even need to use 3x3x2 algorithms. Okay, so basically these pieces are wrong so basically we put it down is this the red yeah this is the red and then we turn the puzzle and put it back in in the right place and then we can then where's this go this goes here and then finally this goes here so it's it's overall a, almost a trivial solve for the last and first layer as well, but uh, since this is a cornerless 3x3x2, I do think it's at least of interest to actually try some 3x3x2 algorithms on this. In fact, I'll just try one algorithm. It's the edge swapping one, since this puzzle is made up entirely of edges. So you can see the algorithm does work. I just swapped these two edges right here. Yeah, so I guess if you were to speed solve this thing, which is a very unlikely idea, you'd probably just use the algorithm instead of doing it intuitively. But overall, 
I don't think this is a bad puzzle. What I like about this is I think I could give this to my non-cubing friends and just give it to them, scrambled, and they could probably solve it in a few minutes. Which is kind of nice. It's like there's not that many puzzles that you can do that with. It's like even with a dino cube, you usually have to show them how to fix the last few pieces. And it's like this puzzle, like, you, you look at this and you don't think it's trivial, but... It is kind of nice that it really requires nothing to solve. The tolerances are uh, very generous, but the design is very old, and I think the designer has moved on to an entirely different software in, in the years that have passed. I know he used to use Blender, but now he's looking into other kind of, uh, other more CAD style programs. Fun little puzzle, and the last thing I want to talk about is this mechanism. These edges are all equivalent. Basically, they hook into these two center pieces, like that. You can kind of see it uh, in here. And it's in a way where all of these pieces are equivalent. Now, another way that you could have done this would have been to make it so that it's just a 1x2x3 with additional pieces here. This puzzle is very simple. I actually really like the idea for its mechanism. And it's great to see more uncommon type mechanisms being used. Like with this mechanism, you could pro like with this idea, you could probably add more pieces up here or down here. Like, not everything needs to be done with a traditional mechanism, and it's just interesting to explore what can be done. I don't think you'd be able to add normal 3x3x2 three by three by corners to this mechanism, though. Maybe you could. No, I feel like if you expanded the mechanism to add corners, then it would just become a normal mechanism and would just be a normal 3x3x2. Three by three by But anyway, that's all I have to say about this puzzle. Make sure to check out the files on Thingiverse, check out RC Pongo, everything's in the description. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.